Will we hear the sound of breaking glass today? Will the Z28 run? The answer to those questions and more soon. Hello everyone, welcome back to Maverick Mods. And today we are gonna continue a little bit on the Firebird, removing the back glass and the windshield, hopefully intact. Best we can do, we're gonna give it a try anyway. After that, we'll segue into uh, working on the donor car a little bit, where I'm going to try and get the Z28 running under its own systems. In other words, without starting fluid. We know it runs, but I want to let it run uh, under its own power uh, just to let it warm up, just get a baseline on uh, uh, how the car, how the systems on the car work before I start taking it apart. So stay tuned. First up, a little bit of window work on the Firebird. Next up, we're going to remove the rear window and the windshield, hopefully without breaking either one of them. Usually two methods of doing that. You can use a windshield removal tool like this, which is basically just a 90 degree blade. Turn it, insert it, twist it, and pull on the handle. That will, the uh, blade will slice through the urethane. Another method is using a length of piano wire. Uh, I prefer welding wire, a uh, couple of uh, wooden dowels on either end, and you just kind of saw your way through the urethane. Uh, either way works. My personal preference is to use the windshield removal tool when you can get it in the channel, simply because this to me gives you a little bit better control on the depth of where you're cutting through the urethane. And it's been my experience uh, that a lot of times if the glasses has any kind of a burr on it and you're running the uh, wire through there if the wire catches on that burr or catches on a corner sometimes that's all it takes to break that glass so one of the things i like to do too is uh, remove as many of the uh, window clips or the trim clips as possible i use as much as often as i can a trim tool like this sometimes the urethane buildup around the clips is too great to me, that just gets the clip out of the way, and it's one less thing to, to snag on. So, here we go. Let's give it a try. To give you an idea of how this trim tool works, let's pick a random clip here. Drop the tool in behind it. Pull it off of the little tabs, and you should just be able to grab it with your thumb, pull it right out. So it doesn't always come out that easy, but when you can get these out of the way, it's just one less thing that might cause you trouble down the road. Another thing that is really important when you're using a tool like this, always make sure that your blade is sharp. And take your time, don't get in a hurry. If you feel too much resistance pulling, stop. Back up a little bit and figure out why it's doing that. I'm dragging a ton of urethane with me. So I'm gonna go and see if I can't This is not normal. I think this window, this rear window might have been replaced at one time. If you're using this tool, another little secret is don't let the blade touch the glass. 
you want to cut closer to the body. Really take your time going around the corner. And if you reach a point like this where you're leveraging very good, pull the knife out, start from another direction. Right here we have a stop. Yeah, this is just a little rubber stop. Sometimes it's still there, sometimes it's not. And that just locates a rear window when it's installed or when it's when it's put in. Kind of leads me to believe maybe this rear window has been replaced at some time. Alright, there's one side. Let me flip the car over. We'll get the other side, get that back window out. This year thing is not going to want to give up. There we go, intact rear glass. We're doing the same thing on the windshield. I can't get the clips out on this side. They're just coated with too much urethane. We do need to take the window stops off though. Here we go. Let me see if I can clean some of this urethane out of the channel. That might help. Let's try it again. Boy, that's tight. All right, well, plan C. Okay, so first attempt to get the windshield out was a massive fail. The urethane was just way too hard. I was really afraid that uh, if I really put a whole lot of effort into trying to cut through that urethane, I was gonna break the windshield. So plan B, plan B is gonna include, we're gonna see if we can't soften that urethane up a little bit with some modern chemicals. Disclaimer, I am not a chemist. What you're about to see is just a guy playing with chemicals. Have no idea what I'm doing. So don't do as I do. Don't do as I say. Just sit back and watch the fun. So here's the plan. I'm going to take a strip of urethane from the windshield that I can uh, cut off. And I'm going to first try and see if I can't just soak it in lacquer thinner to soften it up. We'll give that a try. If that doesn't work, then I've got some more powerful stuff here. I hope I don't have to go that far. 
We've got some MEK. We have some xylene. This stuff is supposed to be really, really stout. And our old standby, acetone. So I'm just going to pour some of that in one of the cups, drop the urethane in there, let it uh, soak and bubble for a while, see if it softens it up. If it does, then maybe I can flood the uh, window channel with that chemical, soften the urethane up, and be able to cut it out. So here we go. Two chunks of uh, really, really hard urethane cut off of the outside of the window channel. I'm going to drop them in here. I'll soak one in lacquer thinner. And just for giggles, we'll soak one in uh, xylene here. Let's see what happens. I think I'll just let them sit for a while and go off and do something else. Update. After 10 minutes or so soaking, this is the lacquer thinner. And just by poking and prodding, <clears throat> it just doesn't seem to be softening it. It might be a little bit softer, but it's still pretty hard. However, the xylene, if you can see that, is basically dissolving this stuff. So I think I'm going to have a little bit of fun with some of the xylene very carefully and see if I can't uh, soften up this urethane. Well, after a pretty fruitless search around the shop for a brush, couldn't find one. I figure we'll just pour some of this xylene into a little cup here. If that xylene did to that urethane, would it uh, probably will do this gloves? These gloves are useless. Let's see if we can't just pour a little bit right in that channel. We'll just start right here in the center. Well, there we go. I'll clean all this up, let that sit for a few minutes, see what happens. All right, well, I've been flooding the uh, windshield channel with xylene for about the last 10 minutes or so. I did manage to get the knife blade in. Let's see what happens. Oh. Seems to be working. So far, fit cross your fingers. Let me reposition the car. Continuing on. <clears throat> Trying to work it past this uh, trim clip right here. I'm going to stop right there, apply some more xylene, and we'll come back to it. It is cutting through it. A lot easier than that really hard urethane. Still not easy.
I think I just did it. I think I just cracked it. Yep, I did. I just cracked it. Well, we established on the uh, Z28 donor car that it does run uh, as long as we're using starting foot. I would like to get it running under its own power um, using the on, all the onboard systems. Let it run. I want to let it warm up. Uh, just test everything. Make sure everything's good so I know where my baseline is before I start taking things apart. So I've got to access the fuel pump. Unfortunately, uh, got to drop the tank on these. The tank has to come out anyway, so uh, I'm going to get the tank down far enough so that I can access the uh, fuel pump wiring. See if where our issue is is actually the fuel pump, and then uh, go from there. So, drop the exhaust first. Let's take a look at what we've got underneath while I have it up on jack stands. Before I start tearing things apart, we've got essentially what amounts to baffled straight pipes. Exhaust system is fully welded front to back all the way. Well, I take it back. There is one. Well, there might be a clamp there. We'll have to see. Uh, I don't know if that's going to help me get the exhaust out or not. We'll have to find out. I did cut the rear trailing arm off, and I also had to cut the rear sway bar link. That took a lot of pressure off of the rear end. However, I'm gonna have to check and see and look up this bar. I don't think that this pan hard bar, or track bar, we're gonna call it, is supposed to be bent. I could be wrong. Um, it's hard to tell. This is very likely crash damage. So we might have to get a new one of those. Other than that, I did get the drive shaft loose, but I can't get the drive shaft out because I think there's a spot on the trans tunnel that is squished from the accident. We'll take a little closer look on that. I might just have to pull the uh, torque arm out to even to get the drive shaft out. This car did come with subframe connectors. Too bad we can't use them. Who knows, I might be able to, but I have a sneaking suspicion I'm not going to. So, and they're welded in, which makes it a little bit harder to try and get something out of it. Um, the accident did pull the yoke out of the tail shaft of the transmission, but uh, so one way or another, I'll get that drive shaft out here today sometime. Uh, we're basically leak free. Of course, this is a uh, T56 six speed. We've got long tomb headers. Is this a. Are they clamped? Thing? This? Well, okay, maybe they are clamped. All right. We'll give it a try. I'm going to take this loose and see what I can come up with. Because the exhaust does have to come out to get the fuel tank out. Once we get up forward, we get out of the crash zone, so to speak, and everything up here underneath looks good. Let's see, sorry about the lighting there. Yeah, so far, everything up here looks pretty darn good. a little bit on getting the track bar out of the way. What did I just run over? I ran over something. I'll work a little bit on getting the track bar out of the way. That'll help me drop the exhaust down. Uh, what magic metric is this? Whatever it is, it fits. I had an extension. That's what I ran over. And I'm still running over it. Come on. There you go. 
trying to be a little careful because I don't know what's still under tension back here or not. So just to be safe, what do we got here? That's a 13 sixteenths. What is on the back side? It's not. Could be an 18. It is an 18. This one might actually come out, or not. Okay, hammer time. Uh, what do we got going on here? This extra brace, I'm not sure what the factory is, it. I guess it'd be a stabilizing brace. Uh, factory car, I think it's just here to and a little and lend a little rigidity to the uh, pan hard bar bracket here. Generally, when we were racing, we'd make these brackets so strong we wouldn't need one. Uh, but it's nice to see on this car. I can't get the brace out because the bracket's bent. Uh, let's uh, use the uh, screwdriver slash pry bar. Oh yeah, this thing's under tension. Well, that was a little bit of tension. Let's take a look. Yeah, that's uh Well, this may not be the smartest thing I'm doing today, but see if we can get this tank down without dropping it completely so I can access the fuel pump wiring. There's a strap. Okay, that's loosened about halfway. That's not too bad. I think if I loosen it, I can just sit there and kind of hang in the straps. Now let's see what we're looking at here. Like I said, it may not be the smartest thing I've done today, but we're going to try it anyway. With the rear end out and the fuel tank out, unfortunately, I had to actually pull the rear end to get the fuel tank out and the exhaust because that was in the way as well. That's sitting over there. Figured out why the car won't start. And this is fixable. So I couldn't get any power. I uh, couldn't get the fuel pump turned on with power directly to the pump. And I figured out why. So this is the fuel pump and the fuel pump basket and the top of the basket came off just like this this is exactly how it came apart and uh, inside let me find it here right here this gray wire is fuel pump hot black wire is fuel pump ground this was disconnected which explains why the fuel pump wouldn't come on. So the force of the accident actually broke the basket loose from the top 
and disconnected the pump itself from the, the harness, which is why the fuel pump quit. So, I will rectify that by getting a new uh, fuel pump basket, however that works. And uh, we'll get this back in, get the tank underneath the car, get everything hooked back up, and it should fire right up. Well, having found out why the Z28 would not start, I'm gonna do a little uh, backyard repair here, just enough to get this fuel pump working and get it back in the car. That way we can start the Z28 up, make sure everything works and just get a good baseline before I start tearing things apart. As you can see, what happened on this thing was at some point during the wreck, uh, this top normally sits somewhere up in here. It's kind of spring-loaded <clears throat> to keep the pump at the bottom of the tank. You can tell by the uh, these little guys right here, it's supposed to be spring-loaded. And uh, when it popped everything loose in the wreck, it also pulled the uh, harness off of the fuel pump itself. So, I'll do a little bit of uh, repair to the wiring and the clip here on the harness, and we'll get this back together just enough to uh, uh, get it back in the tank and just slide the tank underneath it, hook it back up, and we'll get the uh, car running. Okay, that might hold it a little bit more secure. Well, hopefully that'll hold it well enough for that fuel pump to run. Let's give it a try. Slide the tank back up into underneath the car and hook her back up. Okay, fuel tank is hooked up except for the EVAP system, so I might wind up getting a uh, code for that. Battery's hooked up, exhaust system is hooked back up temporarily. Let's cycle the key about five times or so. That should give us fuel pressure. Okay, something went wrong. Okay, it popped something loose here. What did we pop loose? Oh, return line. Okay, return line popped off. Let's put that guy back on. Okay, well, the return line popped off, which is a good sign, which means we probably have fuel pressure. Let's see if she runs. Ain't that something? Well, there you have it folks got the glass out of the firebird batten 500 rear glass intact front windshield didn't come out so lucky but now uh, what the heck i was i was hoping to get either one of them out unbroken and at least we got the back one out unbroken so uh i call that a successful day and on the uh, donor z28 got it running under its own power 
everything looks good from here on out. Uh, mostly that one's just going to be disassembly. So stay tuned. I certainly appreciate you watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. It sure would help me out. Everybody have a good day.